Hi everybody, my name is Chipo. I'm with Runner Flow Foundation. And as part of um, the 16 days of activism against gender-based violence, we decided to speak about a campaign that we started sometime last year, hashtag 263 birth stories. I think the sad thing about our culture is that we don't share as a women. Everyone has a story, doesn't matter um, if you're rich, you're poor, you're in the middle, you're in the city, you're in the village everyone has a birth story so we just want us to share those birth stories so we're quite privileged right now our first birth story is going to come from my sister who's also um, a board member and trustee christine and she's going to briefly share her experience um hi christine hi how are you today? i'm fine so can you tell us how many kids you have i have three boys mob is my name MOB meaning what? Mother of boys. Ah. <laughs> well, I'm an M that would make me what? An MOG. MOG. Mother mom, of mom girl. girl. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Christine. Yeah. So we want to make this brief, um, but we just want to hear what your birth experience was. I know you had shared with me prior mm -hmm. that your last um, baby, you had issues. Yeah. So I want to, um, to share with everyone. Can you just briefly go through it? And yeah, go ahead. Okay. So I would say, for lack of a better word, I was very spoiled um, with my first two pregnancies. Apart from not eating, not because I wasn't sick, but it just is something that happens to me genetically. I just don't eat. I had very, very smooth and, to be honest, beautiful pregnancies, including the third one, to be honest. Um, my labors are very short. When I say short, for example, with the second um, birth, I was in a meeting. And my water's broke in the morning. I actually went to work and I was in a meeting and I was writing my contractions saying, oh, okay, now three minutes. Okay, now four minutes. I finished the meeting. Uh, my mom came to pick me up. I went to Bon Marche. I bought soap for the baby for my hospital bag. We went home. I packed the bag. I had dinner. I had a cup of tea. I had a bath. And then I said, yeah, let's go. And literally within an hour, he was born. Those are the kinds of pregnancies and um, births that I was used to. The third one was a fantastic pregnancy, albeit being a little bit older, so the body was a bit more, you know, it was a bit more painful physically, but I was fine. Great pregnancy, great checkups, everything was going on course. Come to the day of delivery, the first thing that um, was really difficult to deal with from a mental health perspective was the fact of COVID, because the private gynecologists were planning natural births. So what it meant is on day one, my husband and I had to go and get PCR tests. Upon testing negative, we had to call the clinic and tell them that we tested negative. Day two, we then had to be admitted into the hospital. And then day three, um, you were to be induced. So that's what they were doing as of October 2020, mm -hmm. literally planning natural births like a Caesar. So the PCR tests came back negative. We were um, admitted on the second day. And in the, th the third morning, I was induced. The induction process with the initial pill was fine and I spent the whole day, I was progressing well, I wasn't feeling any pain, my blood pressure was fine, the baby was not in any kind of distress. Come to 5 o'clock in the afternoon, uh, my doctor came and he said, oh, you know, your, your, your centimeters haven't moved much because the aim is to try and get you out of hospital quickly to avoid the mother and the baby contracting COVID. Mm -hmm. So he said, why don't we do uh, an IV oxytocin to speed up the process of, of you um, dilating? And I said, it's fine. They did do um, the oxytocin at about um, 8 p.m. And before then, they were checking the baby. And then at 8.30, um, the nurse came in after I'd had 30 minutes of oxytocin. And I remember looking at her face as she was checking the baby on the monitor. And her eyes were like... So now I was thinking, ah, okay, uh, Mayawa, what's wrong? Mm -hmm. Then she said, ah, um, Kiri, why don't you maybe try and change your position? I thought, okay, that's fine. I changed my position. Then she goes, um, ah, okay, I think maybe my machine is faulty because now she was feeling, you could tell she was in a bit of a panic. Mm -hmm. And then my husband said, is everything okay? Then she goes, ah, no, it's fine. Let me just come back with another band. She came back and the third time, the same look on her face. Then I said to her, is everything okay? And then she says, the baby's heart rate is really, really high. Like it's beating fast. We thought, okay, so what does that mean? And then she said, um, I might have to call your doctor to come a little bit sooner or just let him know 
that the heart rate is astronomically high. She went, she called him, and then he said, okay, switch off the oxytocin and let's give it another hour to see how the baby and the mom are faring. To be honest, by then, my blood pressure was through the roof. It was through the roof because during that year, I had had very personal people close to me lose babies. Mm -hmm. And I knew that this was a reality, that the difference between a minute and zero is the difference between life and death. Mm -hmm. The nurse came back in 30 minutes, not in an hour. And she said, do you mind if I just check again for her own ease? And she said, do you know what? This heart rate is too fast. She called the doctor. And just before she left, she said, when she first introduced herself to me, she said, oh, how are you feeling? I, I've read your file. You've got easy births. And what's your biggest fear? And I said, a Caesar. And she said, why is it your fear? And I said, because number one, I'm allergic to 22 drugs. Number two, I've had 10 surgeries over the course of my life. I don't want to give birth via operation. I don't want to go through that process of being cut and not knowing what will happen. And then she says, Kiri, your fear is now here. We have to operate. How do you feel? I started crying. My husband was like, don't panic. Him and I had a terrible fight before the <laughs> operation because I was saying, don't tell me to calm down. And he was saying, you have to calm down for the sake of the baby. And it was just a mess. They called the anesthetist, that word. Well done. <laughs> I know, right? And she came and she saw my file. And when she saw my file, she was very uncomfortable and she was very honest. And she said, your drug allergies are really intense. And I don't know how I feel doing this operation. But for us, it was like, okay, we get that. But because I've got, I've got allergies to drugs, mm -hmm. what should I do? Then she says, what's your preference? And I said, definitely an epidural Caesar. Mm -hmm. Because I was like, I just have a fear. If you put me down, I don't know. What if I don't wake up? Mm -hmm. Then she said, okay. So let me, sorry to cut you. Yes. So epidural Caesar is where they just numb the bottom, the bottom part, but you're up. Right. Yes. Okay. And you're right. watching everything happening. Okay. They also then asked me who my pediatrician was because the baby was obviously in distress. So mm -hmm. it was a red code. She was now on her way and my gynae arrived. And literally within five minutes or so, I was being wheeled into the theater room. Mm -hmm. Unprepared. My parents don't know. My siblings don't know. And we're just doing it. He doesn't even have time to call people and say, guys, in 15 minutes, Jato mm -hmm. I got into the theater room and it was awful. It was awful because they tried 12 times to do the epidural and it wouldn't work because I have osteoarthritis on my spine. And there was no fluid for them to tap in to be able to put in the needles. And why it was such a horrifying experience is I kept looking at the nurses and I remember just thinking, they're looking at me because I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's how I felt. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. The baby's going to die. It mm -hmm. was just, ugh. And the fact that my husband wasn't allowed to come in, they said, um, it's too, because it's such an emergency, he mm -hmm. can't come in. Mm -hmm. So I said, at what point does he get to come in? They said, he'll come in towards the end once we've cut and we've taken the baby out. Mm -hmm. um, the pediatrician was just a godsend because she just kept holding my hand, giving me words of affirmation, saying it's going to be fine. Do we want to shout her out since you're so <laughs> tremendous? <laughs> Dr. Mashumba. Awesome, Dr. The, Mashumba. The, the MVP, thank you. <laughs> she literally saved my life mm -hmm. because she just gave me words of affirmation. She spoke me through it and she kept saying, your baby is going to be fine. He's going to be a healthy baby. It's just slight distress. Like, don't worry. Mm -hmm. Before I knew it, 30 seconds later, they were like, right, we're injecting you. We have to put you under. Oh, gosh. And I remember just thinking, can I see my husband? And he said, no, you can't. Like, mm -hmm. this is an emergency. Like, we, we have to. Mm -hmm. We have to do this now. Mm -hmm. And I do remember the last words I said was, please make sure he takes nice photos. <laughs> oh, so <laughs> of, vain. Of the baby. I know, right? I was like, please make sure he takes nice photos. Yeah. But they allowed, they, we did a prayer, which was nice. Mm -hmm. And at least they allowed me to go in with my rosary. And that was the beginning of a whole new level of drama. Because the birth happened and that was fine. Apparently my husband then came in. But when I woke up, I was in ICU. Oh gosh. And I was in ICU simply because of the amount of reactions that I have. They just didn't know what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. So... 
it's a very emotional birth for me and why I share it because mm -hmm. I only then got to meet my son after three days. That was very hard. Oh my gosh. He was in neonatal um, because I was in ICU and then I was taken down to um, CPU. Um, and I met him after three days and I've got the pain of the operation because I remember the first thing I did when I woke up is checking that I was alive, number one, and asking whether he was okay. And they were like, no, your baby's so cute and he's fine and he's a neonatal. And I wanted evidence. Mm -hmm. And I said, I need to see that you're not lying to me. And then they were like, okay, no, um, you know, we'll call your husband. He came and I actually saw the videos of everything. Mm -hmm. And I got to see him. And that too was very emotional because there were very sick babies in the ward. Mm -hmm. And when I walked in, the moms were like, oh, what's wrong with your baby? And I actually said nothing. It's actually me who had the issues. Mm -hmm. So that was very hard because you're seeing a mother with a tiny baby mm -hmm. struggling with all of the, you know, yeah. the heart monitors, etc. But God had blessed us with yes. such a beautiful baby boy. So, so in I, retrospect, yeah. um, going through what you've gone through, mm -hmm. I'm hearing a lot of um, that you had a bit of mental health crises mm -hmm. with how everything was changed. You had mm -hmm. your birth plan mm -hmm. and at the last minute it had to change to save your life. Mm -hmm. What do you think you would say to people who think that the maternal mortality rate in Zimbabwe is only for people that don't have access to the facility that you had mm -hmm. or the support that you had. Mm -hmm. You almost, it was almost tragic, yeah. right? We're happy that you're here. Yeah. But what do you say to people who say, ah, you know, it wouldn't happen to me. Mm -hmm. and, you know, what would you say to them? I would say the greatest lesson that I learned mm -hmm. is our lives are not in our hands. Mm -hmm. You literally have to be prepared for anything. Mm -hmm. It can happen to anybody. Mm -hmm. And like I say, in that particular year of 2020, these are very, very close people to me who went through such tragedies. These are people exactly like you're saying, mm -hmm. who ordinarily people would say, ah, mm -hmm. it can happen to anybody. And the, the, the moms died? Did, did the children live or they both died? It, it, so for two of them, the mom and the baby died. Oh, gosh. And for one it was, and actually no, for two it was the baby. Mm -hmm. It's four women that I know. And then, so two babies, and then for the other one, the mom and, baby. and the baby. It can happen to anybody. And if I've ever truly appreciated the words, mm -hmm. no one should ever take those words for granted. Because when you say bye and you say, mm -hmm. even, I, I even think about my aunties at home, the helpers. Mm -hmm. I literally said to them, mm -hmm. two weeks later is when I went back home. And by the time I got home, they were very emotional. They were like, ah, oh, mama, it's very emotional. They were like, ah, mama, it's not tender. We're good to my zoka. Because we shouldn't take those things for granted to say, yeah. you'll just go and you'll come back. Yes. So, yeah. So I think in the spirit of 16 days, I think it's important that we all amplify mm -hmm. that um, for me, um, having started this organization, and even if you see with the branding, I always say, Apona, Apona, I'm 100% Dao. Mm -hmm. Where it came from for me was Kumandao, we say, Apona, Manai, Apona, Kumana, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like a double entendre because it means, Kuti, you could have died. Yeah. So, Wapona, yeah. right? And I think it's important that we start to have conversations around maternal health and we have them publicly right. because I think women go through so much. Yeah. But, uh, right? Mm -hmm. We shouldn't talk about that. Mm -hmm. And in some other spaces, what happened to you? You know? Yeah. So, I think I, I just want to say thank you for sharing your story. Mm -hmm. And um, I do know that you have an organization called Lotus that supports women who go through gender-based violence. Right. Mm -hmm. And also you have a mental health component to that. Yep. So I'm going to make sure I pin your details for other people who want to speak to Christine about her birth experience. And also if you're going through gender-based violence and you're looking for supports, I think it's high time that women in Zimbabwe just band around each other. And, you know, let's just not talk about sisterhood in the yeah. abstract, right? Mm -hmm. Like, let's make it happen. Yeah. So thank you so much. And Makoro Koto. <laughs> thank you so right? much. I receive. Thank you so much. Thank you.